So if you are pretty new to critical thinking or debate, there are basically 12 types of cognitive, you kidding, bias. If I get through one of these videos without a cat, that'd be fantastic. Um, there are 12 types of cognitive bias, and one of them is the halo effect. And I think a really good example of this is the case of Mark Ripito and starting strength. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about what the halo effect is. So I've got my notes up here. The halo effect is a bias. Um, it's all about assuming someone or someone's competence or ability in one area is based on their competence or ability in another area. For example, so, so you might believe that someone who is good in business might be a good political leader, that kind of thing. So you just assume that someone that's good at one thing might be good at another thing. And this is a kind of cognitive bias because that doesn't always hold true. Now, where this might apply to Mark Ripito is that we know that he is an expert in strength training, okay? There's no denying that. The dude has published a ton of books, a ton of articles, YouTube videos. He has helped a lot of people get a lot stronger in the squat, the bench, the deadlift. And I think he's really helped with the models that he's put forward, standardized the performance of those movements. And credit where credit's due, I think it's been a lot, of, a lot of use to a lot of strength coaches, a lot of athletes, a lot of recreational lifters. So you've got to put credit where credit's due. He is good at that. That's his field. The issue, I think that he seems to be having now is this halo effect is that because he's been good in this one area, there seems to be this bias or this assumption that he's automatically knowledgeable in other areas, which doesn't necessarily hold true. Now, if we think about what that applies to, like one of the most recent debates, he's had this big thing with Zach Talender about Olympic weightlifting. And as a weightlifting coach myself and as someone that shooters it, I've got to be honest, um, Rip's views are hella outdated. Like the literature doesn't support it. The coaching doesn't support it. Um, and if you have an entire collective of coaches for a sport saying that actually you might be wrong about this, this is how we do things, and some of the best, most prolific coaches in the US, that is what they're saying, we should probably listen to them. It probably means that Mark's knowledge might not be correct there. Um, so that's just one small example of that. But it seems to be that he's applying this kind of effect to lots of different topics, like assuming knowledge in them. Um, sorry, my phone's just fallen over there. I'm just going to tidy that back up. Yeah. So, but he's also applying it to things like environmental science, political science, government, um, politics, which we ain't going to touch on today. Uh, it's not really the time or the place, but he's applying this. He's got this idea that because he's knowledgeable in strength, that he's knowledgeable in all of these other areas and he's sharing his opinions, um, almost as facts, um, less sharing them as opinions and more sharing them as this is how it is. And that's a really problem. That's another bias in um, that we can come onto another opinion, like the opinion as fact kind of uh, kind of problem. But the, you can see how this is problematic. Like uh, the assumption that because he's knowledgeable in strength training, that he's somehow knowledgeable in all these other areas. And these are complex areas, guys. And like, let's be honest, like environmental science. I mean, god damn, people do PhDs in this stuff. Like people do years and years of research, years of study to get to the tip, you know, the tip of the iceberg. Pardon the pun. Like. You can't just assume that because you know how to squat, bench, and deadlift that you understand this shit. Like, um, you know, look, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I'm a weightlifting coach. That's what I'm good at. But I'm not going to go around telling, like, my friends with, like, PhDs in microbiology about their jobs. Like, why, why would I do that? It's, like, completely bonkers. It's completely backwards. But this really seems to be down, like, the rabbit hole that Mark's sort of gone down into. And the problem that we're facing now is that when someone finds themselves in this position, they've got two options, right? They've got two options. If you take approach to sort of like rational skepticism, you might have to take a step back, reassess your own views, perhaps consider that you might not be correct or that your views might need updating or that you are here, other people are there, and that maybe truth's over here somewhere and you need to work together towards it. That's one option. Um, really doesn't seem to be the approach that he's taking. What seems to be happening is he's taking this other route, which is digging his heels in, saying that everyone else is wrong without really giving any evidence, literature, or even anecdotal um, information to really support his arguments. Um, and it's been a real problem because it's just digging him deeper and deeper and he's getting further and further wrong. Like, if this is where he was and this is where current information actually is he's moving further and further away from it and he's looking more and more silly over time um i doubt he'll ever actually watch this video to be honest i'm a very small channel but it's just something to be aware of you know this is the bias this is the halo effect and this is what mark ripito is doing he's assumed that because he's knowledgeable in one thing that he's knowledgeable in a bunch of others which i just don't think really holds true it's a cognitive bias um it's a problem with rational thinking and he seems to be quite down the rabbit hole in engaging in it. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I will catch you in some more videos. See you later.